10 minutes with Tamara again, and we don't know. This is, um, and it's the 4th of July. This is take two. <laughs> um, so earlier I tried to make a video, and it, uh, I couldn't see any of your questions, and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to try this again, and hopefully I'll see your questions. So I was like, oh, where is everybody? I can't see any questions. And then there was like all these questions that I, when I logged off. So we're going to try this again. Can someone, um, a few of you watching, can someone um, type a question real quick so that I can know if the function's working? I don't know where else I can look. Hold on a second. And for those of you who are watching this later on YouTube, this the reason I'm confused is I'm doing this on Facebook Live, and so I'm trying to find, make sure I'm getting any uh, questions. If someone can type a question that so that I can see if I if I can see them, because I had trouble in my earlier broadcast today. Can someone type something? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. One testing one two three four. Um, let's see. Oh. Ah, yes, I can read that. Yay! Is that now, are you pronouncing that Charlie? I know that's not really your name, but <laughs> are you, how are you pronouncing C-H-R-L-Y-E? Okay, well, I'm going to go with Charlie. Um, so, hello, everyone. I'm here to do a QA. and a And so this, uh, earlier today, I did this and I couldn't see any of your questions. So I'm doing this thing I'm calling 10 Minutes with Tamara. It's a new feature feature. It's something I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to do these as interviews with my friends. And um, and so it's a Q&A right now. That's the format we're doing this in. And you can ask me any question and I'll answer it. And the last two have gone on for about an hour each. And I've answered a lot of questions during that time. So we're going to try this again. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, Peggy is back. And Peggy has, hi, any issues with a home built in 2011? Wow, no, you know, a home built in 2011, that's, that's, that's terrific. Um, you know, if it had uh, issues with mold from construction, it would have been found out already. If it has issues with the off-gassing, it would have been found out already. If there's issues with nail pop and porous con construction, all of that stuff would have come through. The, um, it's not going to have lead paint, and assuming we're talking about a traditional home, not like a houseboat or uh, some other kind of home. Um, and it's, it's uh, across the board going to be fine, except for the plumbing. The plumbing, uh, the legislation passed under the first Bush, I think first Bush, no, second Bush administration, uh, uh, said that pipes, fittings, and fixtures could be up to 8% lead and still be labeled lead-free. So we have lead pipes fitting, leaded, leaded brass uh, pipes, fittings, and fixtures that are up to 8% lead and were installed up until the legislation um, changed and the new new um, legislation went into effect. I think it was 2016 and actually it was like enacted for 2015 and then became fully enforceable in 2016, something like that. I'll have to look it up. I'll find that. And so even homes built new up until that time and after with old stock on the shelves had uh, unsafe levels of lead in the pipes, fittings, and fixtures. This could be water heaters, it could be faucets, it could, and they could have still been labeled lead-free. So that since has been changed to a leach testing standard that is comparable to the leach testing standard in California. So prior to the last couple of years, I would tell people, hey, if you want a better faucet, that's more likely to be have less lead, go to California, and anything that is compliant with the water leaching uh, standards for pipes, fittings, and fixtures in California um, would be acceptable or the best among the best. And then I'll, alternately, I told people to go to Germany, get something direct from Germany. Now, the interesting thing is we purchased or tried to purchase a water filtration system. Uh, I think it was from a Canadian company. I can't remember at this time. And we, when they first sent it to us, they sent us one. They said, do you want the $1,000 one or the $1,100 one? And the $1,000 one was for everybody uh, else. And the $1,100 one that was compliant with California standards 
uh, that was that was more expensive because they had to be compliant with California standards. So this one company we encountered actually made something direct for the California market in our experience, and that's why we've advised people to um, get California uh, standard uh, level uh, quality water uh, delivery system components. So the interesting thing about that, though, <laughs> is that this new legislation that is now in effect about um, about uh, water standards, that it's now federal legislation, is technically on one level seen to be as good as California. But I talked to a guy who's a water content toxicant uh, specialist. I don't know. He analyzes people's water for them and, uh, and on an industrial level and stuff in California. And he told me, that because the way the new law was structured, the new federal law that um, that it you know takes precedent over the California law, unfortunately they um, there's a loophole. There's always a loophole, right? So there's a loophole. This is a long answer to a short question. Uh, so the loophole is that now um, to be compliant, it's the total lead content of the fixture. So if the water heater companies are calling the component or fixture the entire water heater and all the attachment points. So when you grind that whole water heater up with all the points um, that are leaded brass, it shows up as below the lead, lead threshold. But then when you um, when you take each component separately, each little nut and each little uh, brass basically attachment points you still have some really high lead components in there but they get away with it in the water heaters it's I'm, I'm not i'm not describing it exactly right but basically the percentage of availability um uh in terms of the total content of lead and and how it might impact the water uh, that's allowable is too low when um i mean sorry too high when they're considering the fact that they're not taking into account each different component. So with a child's toy, each component has to be below 90 parts per million lead in the paint or coating, and each component has to be below 100 parts per million lead in the substrate. So um, in this California loophole with the new water delivery system uh, component law, the component can be the water filter with water heater with all the bits and pieces and not each bit and piece separately. If I'm probably going to Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, that long answer. Um, so yeah, so with every home, uh, and regardless of the age, you want to do testing on the water. Uh, I use, uh, my friends have the company certifiedkit.com, and his name is Lee Wasserman. He's He's been um, working with the people who make the kits and do um, delivery. Uh, they basically they ship you the kit, and then you collect your sample, you follow the instructions, and then you send it back into them. They email you the results in three to five days. You can have it expedited too, and it includes the FedEx that um, shipping that that it takes to send it into them. So it's it's a good way to get your water tested. The problem with the free testing that they do at the um, at the water districts, like your county health department or your county water district or your city water district or your state, might offer free testing and. That testing usually only tests down to 15 parts per billion lead, which is the federal threshold for toxicity. So if it's below 15 parts per billion, it says, oh, it's fine, it's, it's negative, it's below 15. But the problem is lead is um, considered toxic in bottled water at 5 parts per billion because it's a packaged product. And lead is considered toxic by the American Academy of Pediatrics at 1 part per billion. So, um, Lead in, lead in water. Uh, so if the county health department testing results only gets you, oh, it's less than 15, it still might be far above five and definitely far above one. So you definitely want to get the most accurate test you can get when you're getting your water tested, which may not be the free test. So get the free test, see what the low threshold is or ask them, and then follow up and possibly get an independent test. It, it's worth it. And I would do one on each faucet because it's the, the lead leaching in most homes, especially 2011 home, is not going to be coming generally from the hookups to the street unless it was um, built on the site of an older home. But it's going to be coming from the end point of use, um, usually, you know, the faucets in your in your kitchen and the faucets in your bathroom. Um, let's see. Let's see if anybody else has any other questions. Are there any other questions? Have I tested Play-Doh? You know, so, aha, so from water to Play-Doh. Guess why 
Play-Doh is not a good thing to test with an XRF instrument. And the answer is water. Um, so water is toxic in parts per billion. So water is generally never toxic in parts per million, God forbid. That would be a, well, I mean, it, it has been. In Flint, it was in some locations. And, and um, because it's a thousand parts per billion per parts per million. So they had like, they had water that was between 4,000 and I think 11,000 parts per billion. But anyway, so Play-Doh is a really high water content toy. <laughs> so it's, it's nearly impossible uh, to test it because it's so moist and the um, density of the water and stuff impact, you know, it's like reading, it's reading this thing that, that's an object that's not really dense because it's diluted with water. So it's not going to uh, test well with an XRF. I, and, and when I've tested Play-Doh, it hasn't been positive. But then again, we're, the concern is with that product, it, it's made out of flour. It's a food product. If, you know, it should be a food product or treat it like a food product, just like crayon. The kids are going to put it in their mouth and swallow some. Hopefully not, but they do. Um, you want to hopefully have it below 15 parts per billion or five parts per billion, ideally, um, in a toy. And even better if it can be below one part per billion. And the XRF can't measure down to that level of specificity. I was also going to say about that, oh, I should post my Play-Doh recipe. I never buy Play-Doh. I, sometimes I would buy Play-Doh if we were on the road or... Um, you know, when we were making the movie and traveling across the country or they, when I take the kids with me on a business trip or something, I might take, uh, buy some Play-Doh. But mostly we make Play-Doh at home and it's the best. Um, it's so much more fun than, than buying it. And it's so cheap, you know. Um, so just salt and oil and flour and the kids love playing with it warm and they get to mix the colors in. And anyway, we've always made Play-Doh. It's, it's easy. I'll post a recipe for you. Um, hi, Zin. How are you? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it there. I'm what, North Carolina. I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? I, we're, we're kind of like um, just trying to figure out how this summer trip is going to go with COVID-19, if things are going to just keep escalating in this crazy way. Um, and if, if we're going to be able to do a cross-country trip by car, and if we do that, you know, how how we can do that safely and if I'm going to be able to see clients during that time, which I may or may not be able to do. Um, it just depends, you know, right now, like you, you can't go anywhere in Chicago. So I'm like, I, can't, I have all these families to see in the Chicago area and I'm not sure how that's going to play out. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, so I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and happy 4th of July from Portland. Where's my happy 4th of July? Happy 4th of July. Um, and, um, we, I will be uh, doing the, hi, Yukonda. <laughs> um, I'll be doing this again tomorrow, probably. And, uh, you can let me know, you like, think of your questions now and then I'll answer them tomorrow. That'd be great. I'll try. Um, it's easier if someone can type them, if you type them on this comment thread, because I can't necessarily reference another comment thread when I am uh, on one video. Let's see. Oh, in a 50-year-old house. I ha Lori, Lori just said, my mom's in a 50-year-old house. Where do you start? Well, 50-year-old house, that's 1960. That's not that bad. It's, it's, still, it's, still, um, it's still bad, but it's not bad. Um, and uh, I have a start here post on the blog. I think that's where I'll start. I'll post, I'll share that with you. I mean, there's, there's so much to say. Um, you know, is she renting? Does she own? Was there an inspection before she moved in? Has she ever had an inspection? Uh, are there children in the home or grandchildren that come to visit? Um, was it an, you know, a Scandinavian style design, an Eichler house? What kind of house was it when it was built? Did, did it have a lot of painted elements? Does it have aluminum window frames, wood window frames? There's a lot of questions before I can give you a where to start. But I have a start, start here post I'll share with you. Let's see. Um, Peggy asked about my rainbow wall. And, and I said, no, no, I talked about this earlier. I'm not, not finished with the rain. We're going to... We painted the house white so that we could cover it with color and um, have it be fun. And so the kids are working on painting it a little bit at a time. Hopefully, we're going to do some more painting today, and the kids were going to play some music today, too. Um, let's see. I had kinetic sand. Um, someone said, have you tested kinetic sand? And the answer to that is the same as the Play-Doh um, answer from earlier. Uh, so if you want to re-watch that... Um, that the Play-Doh answer is your answer to why 
um, that's not relevant um, to be testing with an XRF instrument. Let's see, Charlie said, when you test surfaces under the Tiffany lamps, what concentrations have you found? You know, I've, I've tested with an XRF and found it, so uh, I don't have a numerical value in parts in, in micrograms per square foot that I can share. I was thinking about doing that, like finding some, I don't know, uh, you know, chamber that I could put a, a leaded thing, like a, a lamp like that or some crystal, and then sealing it off and leaving it there for a month and then doing a dust wipe sample. But I... I um, not sure what that chamber would look like or, and it'd have to have it pass air throat you know it couldn't be like an airtight chamber because you'd want it to represent or be you know be representative of the um, conditions of it of the object sitting on a shelf in a home or something so i i, uh, I haven't done that yet <laughs> it's on the list um mercedes hi mercedes uh mercedes said since i know oh i saw your question earlier i actually answered this question in the fireworks blog post that i have up on the blog mercedes so you might want to check that out um uh it's the one my overview post about fireworks her question is since i know that fireworks have the potential to contain heavy metals my kids and i are staying inside and watching hamilton um instead a package that i was waiting for arrived not too long ago and i went out to get it and it was less than five minutes but the door was open when i stepped out and then there was all this smoke because my neighbors are lighting fireworks outside and once i grabbed the package i wait it moved i came back and closed the door but my kids were out the door trying to catch a glimpse should i be overly concerned would an incident like this raise levels uh, an incident like this is not likely to raise levels at all Hold on, my kid. Hey, Avi, I need the power supply. Can you go bring me the cord? No. Okay, you're on. You're on candid camera. Um, it's out there. It's out there, plugged into the shop. Avi. Oh, he doesn't listen. Where? It's out there by the shop. My my computer's gonna die. Anyway, so if your kid walks past someone doing fireworks or something, that's not gonna result in measurable levels, most likely. Um, if your kid stands in a cloud of smoke for an hour or two, <laughs> I don't know. I think it probably could have an impact. Um, I don't know that anyone studied it, and there's no way to say. It's uh, anyone's best guess, but when you stand in a cloud of contaminated smoke, my, my kiddo right here, Avi, was poisoned because he inhaled the fumes. Sorry, we're plugging in my computer. Avi, you want to say hi? Hello. Okay, they can't see you. Po po poke your head in so they can see you. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so Avi was seven months old when he inhaled the fumes uh, from them doing the lead paint fuming on my house. Obviously, that was a much higher con concentration of lead, but he also was really significantly acutely poisoned. So the question is if um, inhaling smoke from fireworks could raise levels, and it seems unlikely given the proportionate level of lead in fireworks compared to what happened to my kid, but if there's some prolonged exposure, especially over, you know, several days, I would have definite concerns and even a prolonged exposure over, you know, one day. Anyway, so I talked about this in the post, um, and there's links to my posts about garlic and detox and, um, you know, it never, it never hurts to, to have extra garlic and, and greens and healthy, um, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. It never hurts. So th that's, something to you know just do a double dose on and and give your kid some smoothies and things like that but i wouldn't worry about it it, it, it wouldn't change them measurably if you haven't gotten your kid tested in a while maybe it's enough to prompt someone to get their kid tested and i never discouraged that you know if you haven't gotten your kid tested in six or eight months but i'm pretty certain that just a, a walking by something as a low level as a firework stream is not gonna um you know smoke Cloud, whatever is not going to be an issue. I'm looking at the questions again. Um, Lori is said owned from the beginning in Las Vegas, I guess. So if you have any other questions, Lori, let me know. Um, and Joyce said, I don't know if these are silly questions. Are air fryer or instant pots lead concern? Wall oven or gas stoves, tops, refrigerators or freezers? Okay, so I talked about ovens and stoves in the last video chat if you want to watch that one um refrigerators and i have a post on my blog about an older i think it's an 80s or 90s refrigerator that had lead in the vinyl on the exterior i found a crazy thing in a lot of refrigerators even really fancy sub-zeros the rubber gasket that helps close your refrigerator on 
pretty much every brand I've tested, but definitely several sub zeros, <laughs> tested positive for arsenic. Um, at like 10 to 20 parts per million in that range, so really low. So I haven't done a post about it yet because I don't own one of those to do extensive testing on. I'd have to like park myself at somebody's house to do testing for a day and do a whole bunch of different testing and make sure, you know, it's this consistent all the way around. But it's a very low level of arsenic, but I thought it was really interesting that this rubberized gasket on refrigerators tends to have arsenic, and I'm not sure why that would be, um, and brand new refrigerators. So um, I don't think there's necessarily a health implication. I just sort of think it's kind of interesting, and I want to look into it some more. Um, air fryers. I've never tested an air fryer that didn't have lead. So basically, I think all the air fryers have non-stick surface coatings, and I have tested them, uh, those kinds of appliances. I don't know what, I don't do appliances, so I don't know what they all are, but I think they've been air fryers where they have like a thing that goes in. I don't know how that works, but anyway, um, the, they've had, they've had lead in the non-stick coatings, just like every single waffle iron I've ever tested has had lead in the non-stick coating. And um, it's interesting because most of the pots and pans I test, even the non-stick ones, don't have lead. I have tested several with lead, but not all of them have lead. But it's just weird that the non-stick coating on waffle irons is always leaded. And I just, I don't know why that is. Um, it can range from 200 parts per million to 1,500 parts per million. Um, I'm reading the next question. Will doctors test upon request? Well, if your doctor won't test... Um, just tell them you think you have had an acute incidental exposure or you just tested something you own or found out that something you own is high lead and you're concerned about long-term chronic lead exposure that might have been caused by that thing, usually like something like a dish or a ring or something. So I, I would, you know, tell them one of those scenarios, whichever one is true, and, um, and they should be able to approve uh, your insurance covering it and they should test. Um, usually, sometimes you have to be a little more insistent, but um, do read my test about my sorry, my post about blood lead testing, which talks about the low thresholds of detection and all that, and and try and make sure that you get uh, the most accurate test possible because you don't want to get have to get tested a bunch of different times, and the more accurate it is, then you know when you get a one in the future, you know what to compare it to in the future. Um, let's see, Charlie said, I always wonder about lead on T-shirts and clothing with printed and painted designs. Yeah, somebody else asked me that today. I haven't gotten a chance to answer all the questions because I've been dealing with kids all day. Hey, Cole, if you guys want to play here, and the kids are playing music, if you guys want to play in the background, you totally can. Okay. I'd love that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They might drown me out. If, if the noise um, drowns me out, let me know. Um, they're Cole's going to play euphonium and AJ's playing trumpet. Um, so on clothing... It's a really interesting question. Um, I, I did a video. We went to Target, and I, I always have to remember this. I'm talking to this dot on my computer, and I and I and I watch the videos afterwards. And I'm like, oh, I, I for, keep forgetting to look at the at the camera um, because I you get distracted by the video down in the corner there. So I'm sorry if I'm, I'm not looking at you half the time. Um, so back to t-shirts. When I was first doing my training, when I got certified in using an XRF instrument over 10 years ago, uh, the trainer, um, asked us to bring in things from home to test. And one of the other people in the group brought in a red, um, little girl's t-shirt. It must have been like a two-year-old's t-shirt. And it had rhinestones all over the front. And she and I tested him was really high lead and I'm like oh geez oh my god I it hadn't even occurred to me but then since then I've done a bunch of testing in um uh Target and other and I've done testing for, at, pe at people's homes or in public events where we've tested vinyl decorations on t-shirts and I haven't really found there to be lead in the vinyl decorations um that said I have a shocker for you guys, one I haven't written about because I don't have the brand information, but I uh, tested some craft vinyl and then I tested more craft vinyl and pretty much all the craft vinyl I've tested has been lead, leaded, like um, in the 500 to 1500 parts per million range. So um, I need to 
get my hands on some of that where I know what brand it is and when it was purchased and then I'll do some reporting but um, that was really disappointing and I don't think that's the same vinyl that's applied to t-shirts but you can correct me if I'm wrong about that so it's possible that there are vinyl application systems that have vinyl product for, for craft that if they are the same ones that are used for t-shirts that, that they might have lead but I haven't recently tested any new product like that that was leaded. Then the other thing I tested that was really upsetting in the same vein was um, these appliques for a baby's wall. Um, so the appliques, you know, like it was a little ocean scene with a with a whale and some waves and seagulls and stuff and that was really high lead. So this mom lived in a lead free house and she had decorated her kids room with these leaded appliques. It was really frustrating and I think they were purchased on Amazon so that's another post that I've been meaning to write I'm so far behind in my post writing <laughs> um, okay let's see other questions Joyce said I don't have an air fryer but was thinking of getting one oh I didn't realize it was the nonstick coating <laughs> um, and then <laughs> you kind of wants to paint you want to paint my house? Come over and paint. I want you kind of to come paint with me. <laughs> well, you know what? So we're painting the whole house, you kind of. It's super fun. I mean, the house is full of carpenter ants and termites, and it's practically falling down. Um, but I, we, because we haven't ever painted it because my kids were poisoned in our old house, and that was last time I painted the house I lived in, and I've been too traumatized to paint my house it's in the 13 years that we've lived here. So I finally said, oh my God, we have to paint the house because there's just way too many bugs and we got to try and preserve the wood that's left because we're never going to get around to tearing this thing down. So I, um, I, we painted it white because I thought, you know, instead of all the effort that went into picking the colors for the house that we painted when my kids were poisoned and how, you know, I spent, I was like, oh, what shade of purple and what's the trim and what's the alternate color and, um, every wall I chose what color it was. It was like... I didn't put any effort into this. I said, okay, paint it white. And the guy's like, what, do you want ivory white or sand white? I'm like, no, just the base white without any tints, just the white. <laughs> and so that way we have a clean slate as a piece of paper and the kids are painting. I didn't show you some of Avi's artwork, so I'll show that to you in a little bit. But Avi painted and Carissa painted and AJ's working on it. And, uh, and we're going to all be painting. And whenever we have any friends come visit, we give them some paint and a palette and a brush and invite them to paint on the house too um so it's kind of fun and let's see oh kelly adams hi tamra we have a couple shipping containers on our lot that tested 2500 parts per million and 12,500 parts per million we'll be removing them but would you be concerned about the remaining dirt out around and under them that will be exposed and accessible once they're removed thanks they've been there about four years yeah yeah I'd be concerned. Um, actually, it's really funny because, you know, I know where you live <laughs> and you're in California and there's lead painted shipping containers that they allow people to have shipped to their homes. That should be illegal. Like, that's crazy. California should be on that. Um, your husband's a lawyer, <laughs> Kelly. Um, you know, I, I think that... Um, that's something that should change because you're not the first person who lives in California who's had a lead painted shipping container on their lot in their driveway in their yard and been using it for storage and then having it removed and those things that that paints shipping especially at the edges especially at the soil where there's um, you know uh, uh, the, the drip lines where it's rusting right at the soil usually and even when it's been placed in your driveway it wasn't necessarily placed in a driveway the last place it was at and so the, usually the edges are rusting and, and the paint is peeling where the edges are rusting and that's lead paint so I think that it could definitely contaminate the soil and I would be I wouldn't I wouldn't be blase about what I choose to do about that I would I would make sure I handled that right away and, and didn't let any kids play near there. Hey, can you guys hear me over the, uh, over the music? Can you hear the music? Yukanda, can you hear the music? Um, so let's see the next question. And Peggy said, it seems like we aren't safe no matter what. No, we're safe. There's so much lead-free stuff out here, you know, everywhere. We're safe. We just, uh, we need to make informed choices and we aren't informed. And if you're informed, then you get safe. Oh, Angela, is it not too loud? <laughs> That's AJ on trumpet. 
um, his new trumpet that he got for graduation um, and uh, at getting accepted to college. He had his other trumpet was stolen, and so he's been working babysitting and tutoring and doing um, teaching other kids how to play trumpet to earn the money to buy this uh, trumpet. And then a, a lovely woman contributed the balance that he didn't have. Uh, and that's the trumpet he's going to be playing at school. So he finally got his hands on the trumpet that he loves and is excited about after having his trumpet stolen back in September. Um, let's see. Uh, so, hi, Angela. Angela, you guys need to come over for a social distance pl play visit. <laughs> come hang out in the yard. What are you guys doing? We got some good fireworks. I'm not kidding. Um, the kids got the fireworks to do from far away. And they're going to, like, light them in the street and then run. <laughs> <laughs> and they got the little showers and stuff. I just mostly have, you know, concerns with the little kids holding sparklers and poppets and things where they're interacting with their hands. That's really concerning to me. So Peggy said, is nail polish safe? You know, nail polish has its issues. I, when I married my husband, I made, I promised him I would not have any nail polish in the house. I have missed it. I, I I get my nails done every now and then when I'm going to have a business trip. I go out. I, I don't have concerns, huge concerns for nail polish, but I'm also not consuming it in huge quantities. So I don't know if other people use it to a degree that it would cause health hazards. Uh, I, I haven't really made that inquiry. Um <laughs> Uh, every everyone are, everyone's hearing the kids playing music. Thank you, my kid. I told my kids they need to start making YouTube videos, but they're like, "We're not ready. We're not ready." I'm like, "You're ready. Look at me. I'm just like riffing and talking to people on on the internet, and uh, I'm not ready." So let's see. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. Oh, don't eat the nail polish. There's um, there's a running thread. Let's see. Mercedes said the music sounds amazing. Yukana said, I, "Yes, I hear it and love it every minute of it." And Angela said, no, it's perfect. And then Angela said, I know. And then she said she's babysitting a dog. And then she said, don't eat it. So I'm assuming the don't eat it is in response to the nail polish. Um, anyway, is that, does anybody have any other questions? I'm going to make sure I, I answered all the questions that were up here so far. Um, please let me know if you have any other questions. I'll, I'll talk for just another minute here. And if, if nobody else has a question, then I'll sign off for the afternoon. And we're going to have, let's see, pasta with pizza sauce. Pasta with pizza sauce is really good. It makes it extra better. <laughs> with mushrooms and sautéed onions and kale uh, for dinner. I think that's what we're having for dinner. What are you guys having for dinner? So it's the 4th of July and um, my name's Tamara Rubin. This is TamaraRubin.com. Let's say mama.com. This video was a live video in the lead group on Facebook. And then what I'm doing is I'm downloading these videos from Facebook and uploading them to my YouTube channel and sharing them there. So the people who are watching this on YouTube, I'm like talking to this phantom um, uh, commentary on the side that they can't see. Oh, well, they have to join the lead group so that they can go back and read the commentary that I'm reading and responding to as I do the videos. Let's see. Ah. Mercedes, okay, we've got some more questions. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll almost, um, I'll come back to the questions in a second. So I did want to say also that this work is, my work is a collaborative effort with you, my readers, and the people who are watching these videos. You help direct what I do. I, I make the choices to test the things I test and report on and write the things I write because of your input. It's 100% directed by what you guys are interested in. Um, and to that end, uh, it's a collaborative effort. And so um, during this complicated time of COVID-19, if there's anybody out there who feels inspired to make a contribution in support of the cost of the work, and there's a lot of costs involved too, um, that would be amazing. I am not a nonprofit. I'm not affiliated with a nonprofit, so contributions are not tax deductible. Or you could hire me. I do phone consultations and speaking engagements and, um, you know, events and things like that. Although I'm thinking that that's not happening these days <laughs> with uh, COVID-19. So um, contributions or, or any way you can help. There's um, a post that says chip in and there's a couple of ways you can help posts up on the blog. And I'll post those in the comments too. Um, it would be greatly um appreciated right now given how complicated things are and um you know i'm self-employed so i got the ppp loan for a little bit but that ran out and now we're left with 
<laughs> hoping the SBA loan comes through so that um, we can make up some of the losses from COVID-19, although I, I'm not hopeful. I mean, you know, I'm not overly anticipating that that's going to come to fruition. So anyway, so that's the set that, that now more to answering questions. Sorry, how many people did I lose? <laughs> that was the pitch. <laughs> help me, help me do what I do because you guys benefit and everybody benefits. So like if somebody sends me a dish to test and they contribute $25, that's great. Uh, it helps with the cost, some of the costs. But then everybody gets to see that dish and like a hundred other people have that dish or a thousand other people and you've helped you just by sending in your dish and helping cover the cost of testing you've helped all these other people get this information they wouldn't otherwise have so it's really collaborative in that way all right now back to the questions um tiffany said i'm in california what year was lead paint banned here so the lead paint was banned for residential purposes in 1978 and if you haven't seen my movie yet i think you should watch it it's a documentary feature film 92 minutes it's up on youtube i'll post the link in the comments um it talks about the nuances of that however the main nuance is that lead paint was banned down to 600 parts per million so it could no longer be above 600 parts per million as of 1978 but new uh, research and legislation has uh learned and uh mandated that uh, anything over 90 parts per million is hazardous to children. And so uh, you might have a post-1978 home that still has lead paint, leaded paint, paint above 90 but below 600 parts per million. The government only considers it lead paint if it's one milligram per centimeter squared of lead. And, and the that roughly translates to about 5,000 parts per million. And that's the level at which federal funding is available for interventions. Um, so, however, <laughs> that's just residential paint. As we will, see, you see, if you see my blog, they've been painting um, with lead paint on drinking glasses, on baby bottles, as recently as last year, um, and all these other sources. So, um, you can also buy lead paint for your boat, and you can buy lead paint for your mailbox, and you can get lead paint for. Now, there's the kids are playing Aladdin. Ah, do you hear this? Um, anyway, uh, you can um, you you can get lead paint still. So so yeah, it was banned, but but it still is there. Uh, a lot of metal objects that you buy that are consumer goods bought in the store, like fireplace tongs over the last 20 years, or mailboxes, things like that that are metal and, and supposed to look like metal, like black, like iron, but they're painted black. A lot of those are painted with lead paint. So this like that's like hot metal or an aluminum or a steel, and they paint it with a leaded base or lead based paint to make it stick to the metal. So even new consumer goods or building components that aren't technically house paint but might be part of your house and painted um, can have high levels of lead. So uh, you can't rely on federal legislations. You can't rely on bans. You really have to just make really good choices for your family. The way you would choose your baby's car seat or the way you would choose your wedding ring, like the time you put into those objects, you should put the same amount of time into everything in your house. So like make really smart choices. Research what you buy before you buy it. Don't buy crap. Uh, make sure the choices you're going to buy are lead free. The information's out there. There's over 2,500 pages of information on my blog. I have almost every product, I think, made to, no, it, I don't, but, but I have a lot of good examples. You know, I have meditation bowls, I have plastic dinosaurs, I have dishes, I have coffee um, presses. I have, you know, so many different examples on the blog that if you look up using keywords, you'll find some of the things I've tested. You can send me a message or join the lead group here if you're not already on the, in the lead group on um, Facebook and ask questions there. There's over 8,800 people in the group, almost 9,000 people. So um, there's other people who will be able to answer your questions as well uh, in case you're not sure about what to buy. I, I approve posts and don't always have the answer, but I rely on the people in the group to help answer the questions. Again, because this is a collaborative initiative. And there's a few others in the group who, who are experts and have a lot of good information. Hannah Gardner is one of them uh, with a green slate. And she's a consultant who does same things that are similar to, but not the same as what I do. But uh, in Boston, she... she um, uh, evaluates healthy home uh, considerations and 
so she's a good person to tag and ask questions to. Hopefully you won't mind that I said that, Hannah. And then there's a lot of others in the group who are professional hazard assessors. They're, they train hazard assessors. There's um, a guy with the National Center for Healthy Housing is in the group. So there's a lot of really smart people in the group who can answer questions. So if you're not sure about what to buy and you haven't found answers in other groups or other places or looking at reviews and, you know, all of those things, just post in the group, ask a question. Post it with a picture, though, so the more people see the post and the, and the post gets approved more quickly. Um, okay, thanks. Let's see. And so Mercedes, <laughs> that was a long segue. <laughs> I got distracted by the kids. Um, Mercedes said, advice for having another baby after lead exposure. Well, get tested. I've written about it. Um, I will share that post with you. I have a post about what happened with Charlie when I got pregnant with Charlie after I, I was poisoned and the kids were poisoned, but I didn't know I was poisoned because nobody tested me. So I didn't find out that I was positive for twice, more than twice the average amount of lead in my blood, more than twice what the average American woman has when I got pregnant with Charlie. I didn't find out until I was almost due and it caused a host of birth complications. So. Um, the work of Dr. Felicia Rubito is quoted in that article post that I wrote about my experience with my birth with Charlie, who, who's 11, almost 12. It'll be 12 next week. Um, and so read that for starters and then let me know what questions you have. But you definitely want to detox. You want to get your blood lead tested. You want to make sure you're in the safest house. I know you're looking for a new apartment, Mercedes, so that's a good place to start. I think if you had told me you were going to have another baby, I would have said, yeah, definitely stay away from that tub and that sink. That pink, t any if you have like a pink tub, or a cream color tub or an orange tub or a blue tub, that's a dead giveaway that it's one of those high lead tubs, almost always. It, it's not 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 100% of the time, but pretty much. So if you got those funny colored older tubs, but, but also the white tubs are very high lead, cloth tubs, vintage tubs, any kind of vintage tub. I've tested tubs that were 300,000 parts per million lead. It's not, it's not a joke, and nobody's really doing the research in a solid way uh, about the potential implications given deterioration of a normal antique or vintage tub and average and daily use by a child. I, I think that hasn't been sufficiently studied. I know there are some studies, and I do know some families whose kids have been poisoned because of the bathtub, um, but those were special circumstances. Um, you can test some tubs with lead check swabs, so I would definitely recommend doing this. And I went off on this riff because Mercedes just recently posted in the lead group that she's looking at a new apartment, and she shared a picture of her tub in the group. and. Um, and, I, and it was one of the tubs. I think it was a colored tub. I can't remember, but definitely something to be, to be concerned about. The plastic inserts, those don't have lead. Uh, the coatings that you do on the tubs, I don't do those. Those are really toxic and they peel. So um, the best bet is, is a fiberglass tub or a new tub, um, you know, or shower. We got rid of our bathtub when we moved in and haven't had a bathtub since. So we haven't had a bathtub for 13 years. We just have a shower. Next question. No, uh, Tiffany said, I was curious if it was earlier than other states. And I said, no, I don't think so. I think the 1978 ban on lead paint was across the country at the same time, although I'm not sure about that. Um, I, the only thing I know that happened earlier with lead bans was the state of New Jersey, uh, interestingly enough, tried to ban lead gasoline before any other state. I think because they're population was disproportionately impacted due to the manufacture of lead gasoline, the factory workers, and the amount of traffic. And then that, their state of New Jersey ban on lead gasoline, I think then was determined to be unconstitutional or something bogus by um, whoever was president at the time. I, I should know those facts better, but I don't. And so then they made it legal against the state of New Jersey's will. And then later, only later, did they outlaw lead gasoline. And again, they didn't really outlaw it. It's still available for purchase today, but it's not found at the pump, in most pumps. Although a friend of mine sent me a post of a picture of lead gasoline at a pump in, let's say, New York, so people could gas up for their boats or their motorcycles or their speed cars, whatever, the racetrack cars. <laughs> so you can, in some places, still buy lead gasoline at the pump. And it's like $10 a gallon. And horrible. It should be a hundred dollars a gallon, uh, or a thousand dollars a gallon. Okay, I'm reading the posts again. Um, <laughs> Karina said, "Love the music. Have you tested skateboards?" Um, skateboards. I haven't tested. I think I probably have tested skateboards. I haven't done any posts about them. 
I'm thinking about the materials that they're made of. I don't really have any concerns with skateboards. I think it's really unlikely that they're going to be painted with lead paint. Um, and yeah, I don't have concerns for skateboards and, and lead. Uh, that could change, but at the, with my knowledge of skateboards and the materials they're made of and their usage patterns and their general life expectancy, I don't have a huge concern. It's possible that older skateboards have lead paint, but I think, you know, older skateboards were not painted and then the newer skateboards were like fiberglass components or plastics or, or plywoods with paper appliques. Uh, for the designs, uh, much like a wallpaper, that then are coated with a clear lacquer, which I don't think is leaded, and then they have like a sometimes a, a sandpaper kind of texture added, and I think that's probably actually some sort of sand product within a urethane, and I don't think that has uh, any potential to be leaded either. I don't think the wheels could be leaded. They they might be the the rubberized uh, wheels. I I'm not sure. I haven't tested those, but that that might be the only, most concerning component. Um, all right, and have you tested magnetiles? Yeah, I've done some testing on magnetiles. I'm going to be posting those results soon. I'm, I don't have those results available yet. Um, I have to do some additional uh, testing for those, and um, I wasn't. I, can, I might pu publish the results that I have. I just I want to be really 100% sure before I post those results. Um, so I'm, I'm just uh, anyway. I was going to wait, and so hold off on that. Uh, my main advice with magnetiles is don't put them in, uh, don't let your babies who put them in their mouths uh, play with them. Ha let children, only let children who won't put them in their mouth play with them. So let's see, I'm going to wrap up soon here. I'm just seeing, um, seeing what other questions. <laughs> Thank you. Mercedes just said, love the work you do. I would be lost about lead poisoning if not for your film and all of your other work. Thanks, Mercedes. It makes a difference. It's been you know, especially when there's hard days over here, I really appreciate knowing that uh, my work's making a difference. It, it, it keeps me here. It, it makes me keep going. It's like, okay, I can do another day. Let's do another day. We can keep doing this. Um, let's see, Tiffany Braun said, I was curious about residential. Thanks for the clarity. Our house is 1974 and we never signed an addendum that said lead paint was ever even used. So I was curious. Oh, Hello. What do you want? hi. Oh, right there is good. I'm getting groceries delivered um yeah that's fine thank you very much um yeah i've been only doing grocery delivery since this since everyone here is medically fragile and um so i'm gonna have to go because i have to put the groceries away <laughs> um but let's see uh she said 1974 so 1974 tiffany um if you did not get a lead paint disclosure which is on my website there's a post i'll put in the link when you uh rented that house regardless of the fact that it's 1974 and that's newer, they broke the law. Uh, the law is that if the house is pre-1978, you have to get a lead paint disclosure, and the lead paint disclosure needs to uh, clearly say whether or not the owner knows or does not know uh, that there's lead paint. It's a kind of useless disclosure, but they're supposed to give it to you anyway because the, most landlords just uh, lie and say they don't know or they intentionally don't know because they intentionally don't get their home tested because they don't want to have to check the no box. So that's a, another conversation entirely and my my frozen berries will melt. Uh, I got stuff for smoothies for the morning, so I sh I, I, I'll get into that in another uh, time. And that, that question is about how the real estate industry and the National Association of Realtors influenced the legislation around um, renting a pre-1978 house or buying a pre-1978 house to the point of it being creating an ambiguous loophole that ends up having tenants think that they're responsible for lead paint because their landlord said they didn't know and they signed saying they agreed that their landlord didn't know. Not the case. I've written about that. I'll post the link too. Let's see. Um, uh, and Joy said, I learned so much from watching you. Um, Mercedes said she lives in a 2013 apartment now and is just looking for a bigger space. And Mercedes is only living her kids shower. Okay, well, that's the end of the comments. So I think I'm going to go. This is probably the most disjointed um, of these chats I've done because there's so much going on in the background between 
the kids and um, the music and the grocery delivery. Yeah, happy 4th of July to you, to you. I know these videos are long, but it's sort of fun to be able to answer all of your questions and get the stuff um, on video in this way. And I apologize uh, for any rambling. My website again, let's save mama, let's save mama.com, tamarubin.com. Please do consider chipping in in support of my advocacy work if you can. This is a particularly difficult month, this month being July 2020. Um, in that website, traffic on my blog has gone down significantly because everyone who's looking for health information is looking for information about COVID-19. So people stop looking for lead information. So my website traffic has gone down and that means my income has gone down fairly significantly um, for, for this time. So if you want to help without spending a penny, share my posts and I get about a penny for each time somebody reads one of my posts and that really helps cover the costs of what I do and helps me keep me doing what I'm doing. Want to say hi? This is Charlie. Say hi. Hi. So they have to see your face down there. Say Hello. hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Anyway, all right. Happy 4th of July. Talk to you later. We're going to put away the groceries now.